Hey guys, so today this video is going to be another sort of public service announcement, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to go over a few methods on how to pre-charge the capacitors in your inverter. So I think most people at this point are aware if you're li using lithium iron phosphate that you need to pre-charge the capacitors in your inverter, otherwise you could damage something. So uh, people with lead acid, this is not going to apply to them. And I think, you know, this has been covered pretty extensively on YouTube. Also, Will Prowse did a great video on it. But I still see it on a weekly basis, whether I either read about it or see it on YouTube, where people are doing it the incorrect, incorrect way or cringing as they put the cable on their inverter uh, because it's going to make a large spark there. So I wanted to go over, you know, a couple methods, like I said, of how to do this. And uh, I think maybe some of the confusion lies in how to use the pre-charge resistors in the rack batteries. So I can go over that on the EG4 batteries also for people. Yeah, so real quick, I wanted to show you guys before I get into the rest of the video. This is a capacitor here. So this is kind of a, a larger one than you'd see in your average inverter. The ones in the 18 kPV are actually pretty large, but... Most of them you see are going to be pretty small, anywhere from like a double A battery to maybe a D battery. Um, and this is actually, like I said, it's a, to an HVAC unit. I bought extra because I had one go bad this summer. I had to figure out what was wrong and we were all sweating until I diagnosed it. But so I bought extra to have on the shelf, which I guess probably means it'll never go bad again. Uh, but yeah, so just to give you guys an idea, while you're using a resistor, you are slowing the flow of current to the capacitor. So let's say this is the one in your inverter or multiple capacitors, obviously, in your inverter. You're slowing the flow of that current until it's full. Then it is safe to have the full current potential there, which is the point of having a resistor or in the rack battery, the pre-charge resistor there that runs through its cycle first. So, and even actually the HVAC uh, units, if you, when you first flip the breaker, when you first turn the thing on, it actually has a little bit of a, a pre-charge cycle that it goes through also. So yeah, same concept there. And capacitors serve different purposes. Uh, in the HVAC units, they'll help make up that extra voltage to get your compressor started. And in the inverters, they'll regulate voltage and do all kinds of different stuff. So we definitely don't want to blow them out. And they really, I mean, they really, people say blow your capacitors and they will actually blow out. Uh, but not all the time. Sometimes they'll just fry. So yeah, it's not always a dramatic pop, but either way, yeah, you can have problems. So here's the breaker that I have in between my ET4 3000 watt inverter that I reviewed just a while back. And this is exactly where I see most people messing up. If they're going to mess up with a 48 volt system, this is how. They have their rack batteries in place and they know the rack batteries have a pre-charge resistor. So they turn all their rack batteries on first, then they turn the breaker on, which again, on is closed in DC. But anyway, let's say on and off. So right now it's off. If you switched all your rack batteries on now, they would run through the initial cycle, which is when the pre-charge resistor is being used on the rack battery. Then after that's all finished, they say, okay, well, it's time to start. And they switch the breaker on and all that current floods into the inverter and blows out. So people are going online and saying, I heard a pop, this or that. And so that's not going to apply to everyone. But again, this is a very common thing that I see online. So if you're going to use rack batteries, and I'll go over the rack batteries and the other methods here in just a second, you must have the breaker on. That is how the pre-charge resistors work in the rack batteries. So when you turn the breaker on in the rack battery, it uh, has an impeded flow. It has a slow flow to fill those capacitors up in the inverter. And so the battery, in order to do all this, the breaker is going to be on before you turn the rack batteries on to start their resistors. So here's the EG4LL models. They have a newer model now. And the light power model is really going to be the same thing as far as the pre-charge resistors. The only difference is going to be you have a button for the BMS here. So that's going to turn the screen on on this. And this next step will apply to the life power battery also. 
Assuming your breaker is on, which you want it to be, and your inverter is ready to go, you're going to have your inverter switch off. But And it's ready. This is it right here. You click that. The precharge resistors start. And they finish their cycle. So I can show you the life power here in just a second. But same process. Once the breaker's on, then you switch these on, let them run their precharge cycle, and you're good to go. It has filled the capacitors inside of the inverter, and you will not have any issues. So the Life Power 4 is a little different. When you click this on here, I'm just showing you this for an example. You'll see the lights go through the sequence, and then you'll actually hear the, a click uh, for the precharge resistor on that. And now it's charging again, but I just wanted to show you guys. So the Life Power 4 is slightly different as far as hearing that little click. Uh, and you'll see the lights do their thing there, but same thing. You, you click that on once the breaker is on and let it run through its sequence. So maybe you don't have a rack battery, or maybe you have a small 12-volt system with lithium iron phosphate, like this little Redodo Mini, and you need to precharge your capacitors in whatever type of inverter you have. You might have a 24 volt, and two of these, or two of something. Uh, that's where these come in. So you can buy really cheap ones like this on Amazon. I think this is a 30 ohm. Uh, you can get ones with aluminum covers. You can get fancier ones. You can build your own resistor, uh, so precharge resistor. So there's videos on that on YouTube. And in this case, uh, you don't have to put it on the positive side. So either side, whichever side is going to be last onto the inverter, you can just wrap the resistor around that and wherever wherever it's convenient for you and leave it for a minute or so uh, so that the capacitors can charge up. So you could do that on the positive or negative side. And I can put a link for these below, but you can find them on Amazon, uh, a 25 ohm, a 30 ohm, resistor for pretty cheap. They're really cheap for multi-pack. So there's no excuse not to have these and not to use them. It's simple and you save your equipment. So the last bonus me method that I will throw in here for people that don't have rack batteries and pre-charged resistors would be a carpenter pencil. So I'm sorry guys, I'm using the orange one. I don't have the blue one here. On hand this was the closest pencil to me so i don't know who you're loyal to as far as big box stores but a carpenter pencil does work as a resistor so the current will pass through the graphite and i've used this in a pinch before it's better to have you know just get one off of amazon like i said but i figured i would throw there that in there as a bonus in case you know you're out in the jungle without a resistor so <laughs> anyway i thought it was interesting the first time i tried it well, I hope that was helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. I figure even if it just prevents one or two people from blowing up their inverter or causing a problem, then it's worth making the video. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned.